Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I'll teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about exception handling and specifically try and catch blocks. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website, javacjava.com, select Menu and Java OOP Tutorials. Okay, I'm going to scroll down here to Exception. Yeah, I had a lot of them going now. Um, exceptions Try and Catch, right? And I recommend if you haven't watched uh, the handling intro, Exception Handling intro, and, or the call stack, you might want to watch those two first, but let's go ahead and open this up. So. <clears throat> There are tons and tons of methods in Java that are predisposed to causing exceptions, and believe it or not, that is a good thing. It's too early in the topic of exception handling to explain at this point, but once you understand all the concepts, you will see why. The very heart and soul of exception handling relies on two Java keywords, try and catch. If you've ever watched that show Mythbusters, then you know that Adam and Jamie just love to blow stuff up. They poke and prod and try everything under the sun to break stuff, and sometimes they just blow it up in the end. Now, if they were programmers, I imagine um, it would go something like this. You know, like, hey, Adam, let's try this kind of line of code, and if it goes kaboom, then we'll catch the pieces and see if we can salvage anything. Now, programming is just like real life. Think of a method as something of a chainsaw. A chainsaw is designed to cut down trees, but there is nothing stopping you from trying to cut the door off of your car. And if you try that, there will be exceptions like a trip to the ER, a broken chain, etc. Methods are designed to perform a specific task, and depending on their level of complexity, it is impossible to anticipate how someone may choose to utilize the message or method. So if you are the one writing the method, you will try to anticipate specific abuses and throw exceptions for those situations. Okay, when I invoke a method that could cause, could have questionable results, I enclose that method in a try block. A try block looks like this. You have the Java keyword try, then your opening and closing curly brace, and then you have your questionable method that you're going to execute. Now, the, the above code is incomplete. We are trying something, but what happens if that statement goes kaboom? Well, that is the purpose of a catch block. At a minimum, a complete try and catch statement looks like this. You got your try block right here, where you're executing your questionable method, and if it goes kaboom, this keyword catch down here will say, okay, how is there anything I can do to catch that and, and possibly salvage anything, right? And right after the catch, you'll have basically like, um, the, um, it's similar to a method where you have parameter types, only you'll have like an exception type. So if that exception type matches what went wrong up there, or was highly likely to go wrong, then it will go ahead and put like the exception object type, right, into this variable name, and then you can, um, you know, access that variable name, or you can execute something inside of this particular code block here, like do something else, right? So in the example above, the most important and frustrating thing to understand is the exception type. Now don't take exception type literally because there's a, there's a whole bunch of them now. Uh, the exception type will appear cryptic and intimidating and the only way to understand exception types is through trial and error. You will need to thoroughly understand how to use the online Java API if you really want to understand exception handling and I'll go over that here in, in detail. Okay, let's come down here and highlight this code. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen here. And I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one by right clicking, selecting new and shortcut. CMD, next and finish. Let's open that up. Let's type in Java C, press enter. Java C is a Java compiler. I want to make sure you have this installed and configured properly. And if you get an error message here, watch my tutorial on installing and configuring the Java uh, virtual machine, Java runtime, Java development kit, um, whatever you want to call it here. But anyway, you should see this stuff scroll by. If you get an error message, watch that tutorial and make sure you get it, get it good and installed first. So CD space backslash, CD is short for change directory and backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory using the md command, call it java. I already have it, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. Change directories to the java folder. And now I'm going to make a directory called um, uh, exception 
try catch. Okay, and change directories to that folder there. And I'm on notepad, ex uh, exception, try catch.java. That'll be the name of my source code file, also known as my compilation unit. Okay, I am going to go ahead and paste the code in there. Ignore the stuff that's down here for the moment there. So basically, it's a very, very simple class. Uh, main method right here, of course, we got our arg string. So we're going to be passing some arguments in the command line there into this program there. And then I'm just going to be simply using an enhanced for loop to read through the args array. And I'm creating this temporary variable called of string type right here. And I'm going to pass that to this method here, the static method called triplet, right? And triplet's fairly simple too as well. It takes a, it, it's static of course, and void is the return type. And here's a signature, just a string s. Beginning of the code block, ending of the code block. So the first statement that it's going to execute is integer i equals integer dot value of s, right? Okay, so the value of method here will basically take a string parameter and convert back an integer object type i, right? And then I'll display that to the console. So triple the value of, and then plus i, and then is, and then i times three, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it. I'll clear the screen, uh, Java, and we'll do, and let's say we want to pass in like say 100, right? Okay, triple the value of 100 is 300. Oh wow, well, this is working out pretty good. If we don't pass anything, no errors, no nothing good there. And you know we know we can uh, let's say 450, right? Oh, triple the value of 450, 1350, right? So this is this is all working out great, right? Cool. All right. So you might think, okay, we're good to go there, right? Um, what happens if I were to do, say, something like this, right? Okay, boom, kaboom, our program just blew up in a blaze of glory, right? And if I were to just, uh, let me clear the screen again here. If I were to do something like Dan and then put in a valid, you know, parsable number basically after that too, right? It's never even gonna get to that point. If I did it in a different order and said like 100, right, and then Dan, Right, you can see it does execute that one and then it blows up on that one there. And if we put in another number after this, right, it doesn't even get down to the 400 there. Okay, so you'll see exception to thread main java.lang.number format exception, right? And so, you might be going, okay, what do we do about this? Well, I'm going to teach you how to use the online Java API. So, um, if you've been watching my tutorials so far, you know about the, the value of, of method there. I mean, I went over that, I went over the integer class, and you know, you have to, only through experience can you come to understand which methods that you need to learn. Now, in addition to that, once you understand the methods, you need to get in the habit of every time you use a particular method of going out and making sure that it doesn't throw exceptions, and if it does, what sort of stuff to look out for, right? So what you wanna do is come out here, and Google's my favorite, Yahoo if you want to, right? And we're gonna type in Java API, right? Or uh, you know what we'll do? We'll just do Java 8, because that's the one we're on there. And um, the integer class is what we're interested in, right? Okay, so it'll come up with something like this, right? Java platform SE8 integer. And when we get here, right, what we're gonna do is scroll down here. We've got our fields, which are like our constants, and then our, our constructors. And I'm using the value of method down here, right? So, and I'm passing in a string here as well. So returns an integer object holding the value of the specified string. Right? That's what it's doing. Okay, so when I click on this right here, it's going to bring me down to that particular version of it, right? Um, and it will actually tell you what it throws. Now, don't worry about the throws yet. I haven't gone into that keyword yet, but that's actually a keyword too, but it throws number format exception. If the string cannot be parsed as an integer, right? So, and it'll tell you a little bit more about that, right? But we basically, that's exactly what we saw down here. So, um, you can see exception in thread main, java.lang number format exception. 
Okay, so that is exactly what we see right here. Okay, so now there isn't any easy way to start understanding these, only this is the trial and error that I'm kind of talking about, you know, uh, number format exception. All right, now that we know that little key piece of information, let's get the browser off screen here, and I'll show you how to do the, the try catch stuff here, okay? So <clears throat> basically what we wanna do is we wanna try this. This particular line of code, specifically this method right here, when we invoke the value of, it can produce a number format exception, right? If the value of S is not in a parsable number here, right? And remember when we pass this Dan in down here, that's, you know, it can't, can't do anything there. So we want to, to enclose this in a try catch there, right? So what I'm gonna do is just kinda comment out this, this code right here. And I'm gonna come down here and you don't wanna see me type all this, so I'm just gonna cut and paste this right in here. So here's what we have now, right? We have our try block right here, and we, we're our risky code right here, specifically the value of, and, and basically, we're trying this out, so we're trying this line. And then we're coming down to the catch, and we know that number format exception can be thrown if the whole thing blows up, right? So if we try to execute that value of and it goes kaboom, it's gonna throw up number format exception and crash it out. That's where, uh, you know, my previous tutorials is saying, oh yeah, Java loves to scream about what went wrong, you know? And that's a good thing there, right? So, right? You might be asking, okay, so we try this, then we want to actually print to the print line um, this string literal plus i plus this string literal equals i times three. Now, if this, if this particular value of blows up here, then this statement here, it won't continue executing anything inside of the try. It'll come out here to the catch and say, okay, I got a number format exception. And NFE, we could do something with it or we can't. And this, or we, well, I shouldn't say can't. We can do something with it or we don't have to. In this particular case, I'm not going to do anything with NFE. Um, it, there's some neat, neat uh, methods that we can do, but I'll go over that later there. So instead of actually having the program crash out, I want to display cannot triple plus s, right? <clears throat> Which is our string up here. Try again with a valid number. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's clear our screen. Let's come up Java C, let's recompile this. All right, and I'm just gonna hit my down arrow a few times. 100 and Dan, and then let's say 450 and um, 10,000, right? Okay, so here's what we get. Triple the value of Dan. Triple the value of 100 is 300. Cannot triple Dan, try again with a valid number. Triple the value of 450 is 1350. Triple the value of 10,000 is 30,000. Okay, so with exception handling, because of this, this crap argument right here that can't be parsed into an integer, instead of our program going kaboom, we were able to display a message to the console, continue on with the program under normal execution, right? Okay, so... Um, let me think if I really want to show you anything else on that. I uh, went over that, talked about the, oh yeah, I want to talk about one other thing here now that we've, now I've shown you how that works there, right? Um, when Dan was passed in here through the string, right, that caused the value of to go ahead and um, the value of method here. It's actually this one right here. Um, whoop, I go back to the string, because this is only the single one. That one up there is like a double one there, but this is the single string, so value of. So if the string cannot be parsed as an integer, it threw number format exception and basically terminated the program there if we hadn't been doing any sort of try on it there, right? But because this bombed out right here, it went straight down to the catch, and number format exception actually matched, matched the exception, and then it said cannot triple, try again with a valid number, right? And when I was up there saying you have to kind of learn these num these exception types, right? Um, that is something that, that it just takes time to, to mess around and, and you pick it up after through experience basically. But um, I'm gonna show you one other thing how you can accelerate that there. So on the number format exception down here, if you click on that, that'll take you out to the number format exception. You'll notice 
It's got a class in front of it there. Ignore the uppercase C. That's, but this is, in fact, a number format exception is, in fact, a class that extends illegal argument exception, that extends runtime exception, that extends exception, and that extends throwable, right? If you remember from my first exception handling tutorial, and the throwable extends objects. Object, of course, as we know, is the granddaddy of everything. So this is basically the inheritance. Um, it inherits all this stuff all the way up there, right? So you can you can kind of follow these things up like if you look at a legal argument exception it will show you direct known subclasses right and you'll see here's a number format exception underneath illegal argument exception right and you're like oh okay so number format exception extends illegal argument exception right so that's basically the way that works it's showing you the hierarchy all the way up here and you can look at these various different things like for example runtime exception we're going to see a legal argument exception in here somewhere. Yeah, right there. And then we can follow this down or follow it up, so on and so forth there. All right. Um, the other thing that I'm going to show you here is, well, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to go ahead and close out of this and get rid of that and leave you with some final thoughts. And at the very end, I'm going to show you something kind of cool there. Um, so the only way to truly gain experience with understanding exception handling is with a lot of trial and error. Now it is not easy, but you will need to learn quite a few exception types before many of the concepts sink in. Referencing the Java API every time you use a method may seem tedious, but it is necessary. Looking at the java.lang package in the raw source code from the src.zip is also a way to solidify your understanding. So let me show you where that is. Um, on my computer here, right underneath my C drive program files Java, which is where it gets installed by default if you're on a Windows operating system. Now I've got under here JDK 1.8.0 underscore 45. This is like Java 8, basically. You're only concerned with that second one there. But inside of whatever folder you have, it'll probably be a different name. Um, most likely Java 1.9 or who knows, some other different build other than 45. But at the time of recording this video, that's what I've got installed on my machine. So you'll see this SRC right here, right? And this is a compressed zip folder, right? Now I can't actually show you some stuff in there because of this copyright thing up here. But this file here, if you open this up, you're gonna see like a Java um, folder in there and then you'll see a subfolder in there called lang. Now that's in the java.lang package. And then you'll see all these classes in there, right? Including one of them, the class will say throwable, which is at the top of it there. Um, you will also see a, um, a class in there called exception and runtime exception, a legal argument exception, another class in there, number format exception. Now I highly recommend opening those various different classes up and checking it out. And I really recommend using Notepad++ to do so. You don't really want to open it up with Notepad because there's some like carriage return line feed formatting issues, it's gonna look really strange, but Notepad++ is a great one there. You know, it has, it's a lot smarter than Notepad. And of course, that's why I don't use it for my tutorials, because I wanna teach you on a raw level. I don't want anything auto-correcting mistakes that you need to be aware of, so. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that, and that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.